So what's new in Elasticsearch 8? Well, if you're already familiar with Elasticsearch and just looking to get up to speed with what's new in Elasticsearch 8, here's an overview of the main changes. Now keep in mind, Elasticsearch tends to roll out big new features even within minor releases. So this isn't really everything that's new since Elasticsearch 8.0 came out, uh, but a lot of new features were introduced within the 7.x run that we're basically calling production ready within Elasticsearch 8. So we're gonna cover both things that are brand new in Elasticsearch 8 and things that have sort of become mature that were introduced in Elasticsearch 7 late in their run. Now for a while now, Elasticsearch has been in the process of deprecating the concept of document types. It used to be that in addition to documents and indices, there was also something called a type and that allowed you to associate different schemas with documents within the same index. Now conceptually, they found this to be a bad idea as it made people think that types work the same way as a database table when in reality, they behave very differently. You'll find that some APIs that used to take a type name now take a generic type called underscore doc instead, and others just omit the type parameter entirely now. Configuration files and plugins that used to require types to be specified no longer do. This is really the most pervasive change to Elasticsearch, and it started in Elasticsearch 7. Really, types have been deprecated since then. But in Elasticsearch 8, they've gone through all the vestigial uses and references to types that still existed in Elasticsearch 7 and scrubbed them all away. So types are gone for good now. Another thing is data streams. Uh, those were introduced in the Elasticsearch 7 run. Data streams, what it sounds like, uh, it allows you to import continually streaming data into an Elasticsearch index. And it's built on top of index lifecycle management, which we've covered for a while in this course. That was uh, an Elasticsearch 7 thing. Now, index lifecycle management just allows you to automatically rotate indices over time and archive them to different storage types and things like that. And really, that's the same idea as data streams, right? You want to be able to look at a certain window of time in streaming data and treat that differently than older data. And basically, by using index lifecycle management, they were able to build upon that and introduce data streams in Elasticsearch 8. Another big change in Elasticsearch 8 is that security is now enabled by default. So you may remember that one of the first things we did when we installed Elasticsearch in this course was to turn off security. And that makes sense if you're just messing around and learning and not really dealing with any sensitive data. Uh, but in practice, it can make life more difficult to work with Elasticsearch 8. So not only is security enabled by default now, it's also a lot tighter. You need something called an enrollment token to use Elasticsearch at all these days, and that needs to be passed around with every request. Another big change is NLP, Natural Language Processing. So artificial intelligence is all the hotness these days, and they found a way to incorporate that into Elasticsearch. Basically, if you have a NLP model in the form of a PyTorch model, that's just a framework for deep learning frameworks, basically, or deep learning models, you can import that into Elasticsearch for doing what's called inference at ingest. So for example, you might have a PyTorch model for NLP that does sentiment analysis. Maybe you can take a look at a piece of text coming in and say, okay, the person writing this was happy or sad or angry or something, right? So by incorporating that model for sentiment analysis, maybe as I'm ingesting text that came in from customers, I can automatically populate a field in my index that says what the sentiment of that customer was automatically. And it's not limited to sentiment analysis, of course. Uh, some other applications that they list off are fill mask, named entity recognition, classification, text embedding, and zero shot classification and coming soon question answering and even machine translation. Now really you can import any PyTorch based model you want with this system, uh, but there are some existing repositories out there like Hugging Face you can draw from and Elasticsearch is building up its, its own sort of stable of models there for you as well. Another new thing is something called serverless log ingestion. And this allows you to ingest data from Amazon's S3 or Lambda services directly into Elastic Cloud. This is kind of interesting because Amazon Web Services has forked off the open source version of Elasticsearch and called it OpenSearch. So they've kind of moved away from Elasticsearch within AWS. And I think this is just Elastic.co's way of providing a way for still integrating AWS with their Elastic Cloud, their cloud offering for Elasticsearch instead of OpenSearch. They've also introduced new Elastic Agents for Azure, which is another cloud platform by Microsoft, and for the Cassandra database, that's also new. They've also introduced something called Vector Similarity and KNN Search. This is tagged as experimental right now, but it's pretty cool. The idea of Vector Similarity is that you can take two documents and compute how similar they are to each other just using the overall uh, corpus of data that you have in the index. So for example, I might have a uh, 
a database full of information about books, and I could automatically compute how similar one book is to another just based on the attributes of those books. Now with KNN search, that means that I can search for a certain number of similar documents to a given document, right? So let's say I want to find the 10 most similar books to a given book. I would conduct KNN search in that example with a K of 10 to say, hey, use vector similarity metrics of some sort to give me back the 10 most similar results to this thing. So that has some pretty interesting uh, applications in the field of recommendations and recommender systems, right? Now this is still tagged as experimental, so it's uh, officially not ready for prime time, but vector similarity has been in the works for a while now. That was actually introduced during the 7.x run. Also, they are incorporating more machine learning stuff into Elasticsearch as well, not just NLP. Um, things like, for example, anomaly detection or outlier detection. You know, if you're importing a stream of data of uh, server response times, maybe you can automatically figure out what an unusual response time looks like and flag that for you automatically. It can also do things like classification and regression and fraud detection. Fraud detection just really being a special case of classification. Now this is what's called a platinum feature and it's also experimental. So it's not something you're gonna have access to uh, within the open source free version of Elasticsearch. A lot of the stuff they're adding is just for their paid offering, which isn't too surprising. They've also updated the UI for the Canvas editor and we'll talk more about Kibana Canvas later in the course. Lots of changes in how geographic information is queried as well and map data. They're now supporting something called vector tiles, which is the latest uh, trend in geographic information systems. They have a new vector tile search API where it just returns what's called vector tiles. What's a vector tile? Well, a vector tile is uh, basically divided into layers and every layer has features that contain metadata. So when you hit this new vector tile search API, it returns vector tiles, which includes a hits layer, an aggregation layer, and a metadata layer. And that will make more sense if you're in the world of geographic uh, information systems. Also, the Kibana UI has changed a lot in Elasticsearch 8. Uh, not only just in Kibana, but also in the alerts user interface. So lots of look and feel changes there to get used to. And finally, they've added a few new features to enterprise search. Obviously, this is not an open source feature, but a couple of new things there are Elastic App Search that allows you to incorporate Elasticsearch into your mobile or software as a service applications. And they've also rolled out Elastic Workplace Search, which allows you to search across sources like Google Drive or Slack or Salesforce. So that's all the major stuff or the stuff that I found personally interesting. Lots of little changes too, of course, uh, there is in every release. And it's also worth noting that there is a 7.x compatibility mode you can turn on as well. So if you do still want to be able to accept Elasticsearch 7 requests and return Elasticsearch 7 style responses, there is a switch for that in Elasticsearch 8 for backward compatibility with Elasticsearch 7 if you want it. But in a nutshell, that's the main new features in Elasticsearch 8, and we'll be covering those more as they mature.